Intermediate Algebra Section 11.1. When we're given an infinite sequence, and you can see here on the screen, we have a sequence of numbers, and with the ellipsis, it means dot, 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 that it's continuing on. If we add those terms together, it's called an infinite series. If they have a partial sum, and they indicate the number of terms that they want to add together. This is called a finite series and is denoted by S sub n. Well, this is S sub 6, which is the symbol for the series or the sum of the first six terms of this sequence. Well, we only have the first four terms, and let me rewrite those here. They're asking us to add these together with the symbol S sub 6, but we only have four. We need to know what the fifth and the sixth terms are before we can solve this problem. So looking for a pattern, it helps to identify what the term number is and what's happening to those particular values. We have one, our first term is a negative 3. We have 3 being multiplied by 2. We have 3 times 3 is giving us 9. 3 times 4 is 12. That's looking good, so that 5 times 3 would be 15. 6 times 3 is 18. And then to deal with the sign in this, if we were generating the general term, we would have to deal with alternating signs. And in this case, our odd powers are having the negatives. So to solve this problem, now that we have our six terms, we are going to add negative 3 plus 6 plus the negative 9 plus 12 plus the other two terms that we just found in this sequence. And when you add those up, it results in a sum of 9. We're given an infinite sequence here without the general term, and they're asking us to find the series or the sum of the finite series of the first eight terms. So we're going to, again, we're missing some terms clearly here. We have the first four, but we need the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth term, and to help us Again, to come up with a rule for those terms, it helps to identify what term number they are. And if you notice, 8 is being divided by 2, which is, gives us 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. This is dealing with a base of 2, where our powers are decreasing all along. Another way you could look at this is... 8 is 2 to the 3rd, 4 is 2 to the 2nd, 2 is 2 to the 1st, 1 is 2 to the 0. This then would be 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, and so on, which leaves us with 1 half. Half of 1 half is 1 fourth, or 2 to the negative 2. Multiplying by a half on each one of these is generating the list. We end up with half of one-fourth. If you multiply this by one-half, you end up with one-eighth. And a one-half times one-eighth is a one-sixteenth. Or we would have had two to the negative three, which is one-eighth, and two to the negative four, which is one-sixteenth. The series then, S of eight, will be the sum of those first eight terms. And whether you leave them as fractions or you convert them into decimal, now it's just a matter of adding them up, common denominator, if you're going to do this without a calculator, or as I said, perhaps uh, either fraction key or decimal equivalency, it ends up as 15 and 15 sixteenths for an exact answer for the sum of the first eight terms.